Good evening aspirants, welcome to daily newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy. Today's date is 7th November 2024. In this video, we are going to discuss three important topics. The first topic is about the average PM 2.5 levels in 5 years in Delhi. This is about the winter pollution in Delhi. And the second topic is about PM Vidya Lakshmi scheme. The cabinet has cleared PM Vidya Lakshmi scheme. And this is about the scheme regarding loan for higher education. The third topic is about RNA editing. And in this article, we are going to discuss the basics of RNA and DNA and what is RNA editing. So, these are the three important topics we are going to discuss in this video. Now, before we get into the discussion, I have an important announcement. The pre-storming prelims test series by Shankar AS Academy, the batch 3 of this test series is going to start on 21st November 2024. Interested aspirants can make use of it. Now, let us get into the discussion. Now, look at this article. This winter, the Delhi's PM 2.5 levels have dropped, but the average pollution has risen due to the local sources like vehicular emissions. Even though the annual PM 2.5 levels have shown improvement, the winter pollution still requires urgent action because the stagnant pollutants are still trapped in the cold and dense air. So, what is the reason for heavy pollution during winter season in Delhi? And what are the steps taken by government to address this? So, these are the things we are going to discuss in this news article discussion. Firstly, let us see about what are the causes of winter air pollution in Delhi. So, during winter season, there is a heavy pollution in Delhi due to two factors. One is meteorological factor and another one is human factor. Firstly, let us see about the meteorological factor. See, there is a term called temperature inversion and we have to understand this first. See, it is a weather phenomena. Instead of getting cooler with altitude, the air actually gets warmer when you go higher up. This means usually the air near the ground is warmer and when you go to higher heights, the air becomes cooler. But this is inversed during this concept called temperature inversion. So, usually the air near the ground is warmer, allowing the pollutants to rise and disperse. But during an inversion, a layer of warm air traps the cooler and dense air below it. So, this traps the pollutants along with the cooler air. So, this keeps the pollution close to the ground, causing smog and poor air quality. So, this is a major reason for winter pollution in Delhi. Also, the low wind speed prevent the dispersion of particles. So, this increases the concentration level of pollutants in small area. In addition to this, increased emission from vehicles, residential heating and industrial activities also contribute to the worsening air quality. So, these are the important reasons for increasing winter pollution in Delhi. Now, let us know about the current level of pollution in Delhi. See, according to 2023 analysis by Center for Science and Environment, the PM 2.5 levels have decreased by about 35 percentage since 2020. But the average daily levels have stagnated and now it is highest in the past 5 years. Also note that the local sources such as transportation contribute over 50 percentage to the winter pollution in Delhi. And also the pollution from neighboring regions accounts for 35 percentage of Delhi's air pollution. The stubble burning leads to a smaller portion of air pollution up to only 8.19 percentage. So, stubble burning contributes only lesser percentage of winter air pollution. Most of the pollution comes from the vehicular exhaust inside the Delhi itself. Now, let us see what are the government measures taken to address this winter air pollution. The first important step is National Clean Air Program. The NCAP aims to reduce the PM 2.5 pollutant and PM 10 pollutant levels by 20 to 30 percentage by 2024. Then graded response action plan. This plan implements a series of pollution control measures based on AQI levels that is air quality index levels. In winter, it restricts the construction. It also bans diesel generators and imposes vehicle ban if the air quality worsens. So, this is about the graded response action plan. The next is about the promotion of electric vehicles, ban on firecrackers and there are efforts to curb the stubble burning. So, these are the important steps taken to curb the winter air pollution in Delhi. Now, let us see some way forward points. Enhancing the public enhancing the public transport network including the buses, metros and shared mobility options can reduce the reliance on personal vehicles. So, this can lower the vehicular emissions. Next about the increasing green coverage. Expanding the green spaces and tree coverage within the Delhi can help trap pollutants and improve the air quality. The next about incentives for cleaner technology. See, providing subsidies for cleaner fuels, energy efficient technologies and emission reducing equipments for industrial units 
can curb the local emissions further. Then there should be stricter monitoring and enforcement of rules and regulations and there should be enhanced data driven decision making. So these are some of the important steps that can be taken to further reduce the Delhi air pollution. With this let us conclude the discussion and let us see an MCQ related to this topic. Consider the following statements about temperature inversion. Temperature inversion occurs when the air near the ground is cooler than air above. Temperature inversion is more common during winter nights. Temperature inversion helps in dispersion of pollutants. So, which of the statements given above are correct? Look at the first statement. Temperature inversion occurs when the air near the ground is cooler than the air above. This statement is correct because during normal condition, the air near the ground is warmer. So, during temperature inversion, it is reversed. That is, the air near the ground becomes cooler. So, the first statement is correct. Look at the second statement. Temperature inversion is more common during winter nights. Yes, this statement is also correct. The third statement is wrong because the temperature inversion helps in dispersion of pollutants is a wrong statement. Temperature inversion leads to more concentration of pollutants. So, the correct answer is option A, 1 and 2 only. With this, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article. Union Cabinet and Wednesday has approved a scheme called PM Vidya Lakshmi scheme. The scheme has an outlay of rupees 3600 crore and the scheme has been made for 2024 to 2030 period. Around 7 lakh fresh students are expected to benefit from the scheme and the scheme is an interest subvention scheme for higher education. Let us discuss about the details of the scheme in this news article discussion. Looking at the objectives of the scheme, it is to ensure that the meritorious students do not have any financial barriers for accessing the quality higher education. It also provides financial assistance to meritorious students in the form of collateral free education loan. So, the beneficiaries are basically the meritorious students and this scheme is a central sector scheme. Now, looking at the eligibility of the scheme, the students who are admitted to top ranked institutions are eligible for the scheme. Now, what are considered as the top ranked institutions? See, National Institutional Ranking Framework that is NIRF has identified 860 quality higher education institutions and the students who can join these 860 quality higher education institutions are eligible for the scheme. The Ministry of Education also said that the students who are enrolled in all courses and not just the technical and professional course are eligible for the scheme. The students can apply for loan and interest subvention under PM Vidya Lakshmi portal. Now, what is this PM Vidya Lakshmi portal? Let us see. This portal was originally launched in 2015 and it is a first of its kind portal for education loans for students. This portal was created by NSDL e-Governance Infrastructure Limited under the guidance of Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Human Resource and Indian Bank Association. It is a 24 bar 7 application status tracking portal and it is a single window for applying and dispersing the government scholarship and educational loan. It aims to bring all the banks who are offering educational loans under a single platform. So, this is about PM Vidya Lakshmi portal. Now, let us discuss about the details of the PM Vidya Lakshmi scheme. The loan amount provided under this scheme is 7.5 lakh per student and this amount covers both the tuition and academic expenses. The students from lower income families are offered interest subvention under the scheme. For students with an annual family income of about 8 lakh, this scheme offers 3% interest subvention for loans up to 10 lakh. The interest subvention support will be given to 1 lakh students every year. The preference will be given to the students who are joining government institutions and the students who are joining the technical and professional courses. There is an another similar scheme called Central Sector Interest Subsidy Scheme. It provides full interest subvention for loans up to 10 lakh and this is for the students who have annual family income of up to 4.5 lakh. So, this is given for students who are pursuing the technical and professional courses. So, this is all about this discussion. Let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. Under PM Vidya Lakshmi scheme, what is the maximum loan amount that students can receive? As we have seen in the discussion, the correct answer is option B, 7.5 lakhs. This covers both the tuition fees and academic expenses. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at this article. It discusses the advancement and potential benefit of RNA editing over DNA editing. While DNA editing makes permanent changes to a person genome, RNA editing is temporary and it allows for any effects to fade over time. So, this flexibility could help mitigate long term risk associated with the gene editing. So, let us discuss about the basics of RNA and DNA and what is RNA editing and what are the benefits of RNA editing over DNA editing. Firstly, about the structure of RNA and DNA. See, DNA is a double standard and it has a double helix structure 
with anti parallel strands while rna is a single stranded and some rna viruses have double stranded rna the dna has deoxyribose and rna has only ribose now if you look at the nitrogenous bases dna has adenine guanine cystosine and thymine that is agct and in terms of rna there is adenine guanine cystosine and uracil here the thymine is absent and instead of thymine there is uracil that is agcu so adenine guanine and cystosine are present both in rna and dna and in dna there is thymine and in rna instead of thymine there is uracil now looking at the stability the dna is more stable due to double stranded structure and it has a presence of thymine which adds to its stability rna is less stable compared to dna the important function of dna is to store and transmit genetic information and the important function of rna is protein synthesis rna is also involved in gene regulation and it also serves as genetic material in some viruses so this is about the difference in their function the dna stores and transmits the genetic information rna is mainly involved in protein synthesis looking at their location dna is located in the nucleus of eukaryotic that is dna is generally located in the nucleus sometimes it is also present in mitochondria and chloroplast rna is synthesized in the nucleus but it functions in the cytoplasm so dna is present in the nucleus of the cell and rna is present in the cytoplasm and also in ribosomes of the cell so these are the major difference between rna and dna now coming to the rna editing see rna editing is when the cells changes the rna message after it's made from dna so this allows cells to adjust to the genetic information without changing the dna itself so rna editing can change how a protein work which allows for a body to adapt to different conditions the dna changes are permanent which is called mutation but rna editing is temporary and it can be reversed now let us see how rna editing works see certain enzymes for example apoebec enzymes changes cystosine to uracil rna editing can occur in any part of rna but if it happens in the areas which makes proteins it can change how proteins work by changing the rna sequence the rna editing can create different versions of proteins so this impact how rna functions this is crucial for process like brain function immune response and more so this rna editing helps organism to survive in different conditions for example octopus edit their rna to help their proteins work better in cold water in human rna editing in brain helps neuron communicate and process information better so rna editing is happening naturally in our body and also in other animals if there is error in rna editing it can lead to diseases like cancer or brain disorder so currently scientists are studying about rna editing for treatments which do not permanently alter the dna so this might be a safer for correcting certain diseases so the study on rna editing is still going on and let us wait and see what will happen so this is all about the rna editing and the basics of rna and dna let us discuss an mcq related to this topic so consider the following statements regarding rna editing rna editing can alter the nucleotide sequence of rna after it is transcribed from dna this statement is correct rna editing leads to permanent changes in an organism dna sequence this statement is incorrect because we have seen in the discussion rna editing only leads to temporary changes and it can be reversible RNA editing is involved in regulating brain function and immune response. Yes, this statement is correct. So the correct answer for the question is option B, one and three only. For this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar Ayer Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.